What is up everyone it's Saber here and welcome to another Naruto What If. If you end up liking the video please consider subscribing, it's free and you can take it back at any time and it really helps me out and this is my third channel so if you want some more what ifs go check out my other channels. And with all of the YouTube formalities out of the way let's get into it. Stannis Baratheon was about to open a door to his past seven hells he didn't want to open this door this was a door he'd ordered shut for nearly half a decade now his men only opening it twice a day to feed its occupant no more no less a constant guard five men in full plate stood watch beyond at all times to see that there were no such unscheduled openings any who dared to so much as approach the door without his express permission would be flogged, or worse as he passed these men he came to. The next line of defense the gate it was a very impressive gate all things considered furnished with four inches of rolled steel and the lever of which could only be opened from the opposite side even then the porculus would only be raised when the lord of dragonstone wished it when at last he came to the door itself he drew out a ring of keys for the door itself held an unholy amount of locks and bars and chains and all other manner of impediments meant to keep the one within from leaving one by one he began to unlock them because on the other side lay one of his few mistakes and perhaps the key to winning this war behind this bolted door lay a bastard but not just any bastard his bastard a boy fathered in a night of passion years ago during robert's rebellion against the mad king a sordid knight stannis scarcely remembered and had vowed never to speak of again he told Cella straight away once he'd returned to dragonstone the deed was done confessed his crime and thought that was the end of that it had not been the end when the wench from that sordid night had come back to him one warm summer morning he'd scarcely recognized her gone was that steely-eyed lass with hair the color of blood full of fire and life in her place was a woman worn weary and broken by the world no he nearly hadn't recognized her at the time whomever she was once she was no longer that girl in her place was a wasting wisp of a waif not long for this world the thought of asking on her illness had come to mind then she'd shoved the babe into his arms few people were capable of surprising Stannis these days but he counted that moment among them he'd nearly turned her away on the spot until he looked at the squalling babe in his arm truly looked at him and there in those swaddled rags he saw it a boy with his eyes his face gods above a boy the sun he'd never had the sun Silese could not give him I the lad was his by blood and say what you will about Stannis Baratheon he was an honest Man unlike the Lannisters and their so-called words he paid his debts she had spoken few words to him this woman from his past but she accepted his offer to stay the night sadly his mother vanished soon thereafter. Whether she'd met some foul fate and or simply vanished in the night he knew not only that she simply wasn't there the next morn and he'd found himself left with a babe that he'd no idea what to do with one he knew next and nothing of him beyond his name Naruto it had something to do. With the sound a goat had made when he was born didn't matter if Celeste had her way they would have laid the boy on the coast and let him be carried away by the wave she claimed he was a monster a demon an abomination but Stannis had held his ground and so the lad remained under his watchful eye the boy was a scamp. He grew quickly in the shadow of Dragonstone and learned the art of war as a true Baratheon should a son in all but name when Silese finally did bear Stannis a child after many. Stillborns it was a girl Shireen they named her Naruto took to his new sibling well enough even after the grayscale incident and for a time it seemed all was well and good alas Stannis slowly realized there was something wrong with his son all the same Naruto began talking in his sleep hearing voices seeing things people that weren't there then he started picking fights in the yard ours is the fury Naruto lived by those words though they weren't his own perhaps his mind did as well he was always spoiling for one fight or another fury now Naruto was locked away as punishment for his what many believe to be insanity for following those very words his crime madness beating a man to death in a spar he was meant to imprison for far longer yet somehow he seemed able to escape whenever it suited him some said it was sorcery others claimed he was half beast Stannis believed it was far far simpler than that strong arms and legs and a steady hand coupled with the whims of a young man determined to be acknowledged one way or another the boy was going to give him endless grief over this exhaling heavily he turned the key in the last lock grasped the handle and opened the door a well-furnished room awaited him beyond illuminated by the waning light of a flame a bookshelf and a pair of mounted daggers awaited him on the far wall framing a small hearth on which logs burned providing its owner some small solace from the night's chill stannis half expected the bed to be occupied but nay the first were flung back in disarray suggesting that someone it had indeed been slept in recently were he to glance askance he might have heard the waves crashing against the shore far far below this wasn't a prison it was a home as he turned his head he saw that the room held only one occupant and he was standing precariously close to the window all hail his grace Stannis of house Baratheon first of his name king of the Undols, and the first men lord of the seven kingdoms and protector of 
the realm a rough voice drawled mockingly hands clapping loudly as he stepped the rest of the way inside he visits me at last what has it been five years this time so hard to keep track when you've shut me away like this as he waited patiently for the rant to end the prisoner his son spun to face him Stannis found himself gazing upon a stern looking young lad with whiskered cheeks clad in a dark black and orange tunic bearing bright blue eyes and hair the color of living fire much like his. Mother's blue eyes cut angry sapphire daggers at him his jaw was set in a smile that looked entirely too false for Stannis's liking bordering on outright menacing by comparison he'd never been good with his children soldiers yes battles certainly but he had no idea what to say to the young man standing across from him you look well son he settled for a curt nod at his bastard Naruto scoffed crossing both arms before his chest that's it that's all you have to say to me what would you have me say? Stannis challenged anger getting the better of him you put yourself here when you killed that man not me as your orbs flicked away from him says the man holding my keys enough you are my boy and I'll not have this from you like hell I'm your son Naruto snapped back at him through gritted teeth eyes sparking like red coals I'm your bastard your mad dog Stannis didn't yield when the lad spun on his heel and stormed toward him he only reluctantly palmed the hilt of his sword when the younger man Advance the one you locked away because of an accident a finger stabbed into his chest accusing because you couldn't wouldn't even try to be a father no you'd rather lock me away than try to understand what I was going through Stannis felt the conversation and the purpose of his presence here slipping away from him irritated he tried to rally himself marshal his resolve and that's not bullshit if looks could kill he would have been a smoldering pile of ashes beneath the gaze of his bastard in that moment I'm not a son to you and I know it the boy grit out I'm your shame his voice broke on the last word crackling with emotion his eyes were wet when he spun away glimmering with unshed tears a thorn of guilt pricked at Stannis and held him back from leaving his stubborn pride wanted nothing more than to lash out at Naruto's words to tell him that he was wrong now get out his bastard hissed now listen get the fuck out a beat of awkward silence passed between them broken by the distant Crackle of the hearth finally someone broke it you are my son Stannis said at last choosing his words with great care nothing can change that not you not your mother not sell us no one not even you have I ever denied this did I ever mistreat you before or after your imprisonment bastard or no I treated you like my own when his son refused to say. Anything he knew he'd won the day well what say you Ba Naruto scoffed and turned away his anger abating you're a terrible father Stannis shook himself mightily quelling the urge to snap at him and those words was more than a nugget of truth I he nearly choked on the word I am so how many men has your red woman told you to burn this time the boy asked flatly resting his back against a wall refusing to flinch when his progenitor glowered back at him how many souls have you offered to your precious lord of light to win despite himself Stannis felt the ghost of a smile tug at the corner of his mouth they had that in common at least the boy's tongue might be sharp as a sword but he could be refreshingly blunt when it came to speaking his mind five the lord of dragonstone conceded at last five more mistakes then came the answer fewer Stannis corrected Naruto blinked beg pardon five fewer mistakes are you sure that's the right way to say it his son queried Shireen might disagree You've been visiting her again it was not a question one look at his progeny's smug countenance told him the boy had done exactly that seven hells how did he keep getting in and out with no one noticing there was nothing less than a sheer drop outside that window. The walls were slick with the constant spray of sea and salt no man or woman no matter how strong or fleet of foot they might be could ever hope to scale them the walls and door were thick so he wasn't getting out that way so how it baffled and can't prove it the blonde blinked innocently sighed she's my sister half sister so i should be allowed anyhow the young man finished with a scowl what you're afraid i'll hurt her or something realizing he wouldn't well win this war of words stannis withdrew a small scroll from his belt is it a letter from the capital naruto pulled himself out onto the window until he was sitting on it what does it say stannis blanched a sudden pang of worry coming over him as he watched his fiery Haired son all but lean out over the edge get down from there he demanded why because we make for King's Landing in a fortnight and this should concern me how Naruto tilted his head contemplating your blood or not I'm still just a bastard Stannis bristled quietly there it was again the disdain Naruto liked to laugh at everyone and everything around him he never took anything seriously always smiling always dodging the question shirking his responsibilities give him half a chance and he'd scrap. With the best of them sometimes Stannis had difficulty believing the boy was his bastard or no I but the lad had his eyes and his temper both. He fought like the devil when pushed to it this one was like wildfire. Fierce and savage impossible to tame one couldn't control him you could only aim him in one direction loose the leash and hope for the best sometimes you needed a bit of that when it came to battle better the devil you knew than the one you didn't I have need of you he confessed. 
Naruto Fran I'm sorry what was that a hand rose cupping his ear didn't hear you stan a shot the boy a stern look if you're going to act like that then you can stay at Dragonstone after a moments of silence he reluctantly amended I need you to complete a task for me at the boy's sullen look he pressed on driving home his brief advantage to the fullest do this for me and I will name you my son and heir and free you from this place Naruto slowed in his swaying what what did you say exactly? What I said if there was one thing that his son cherished Stannis knew it was recognition he yearned to be acknowledged legitimized publicly the surest way to gain his aid was to offer him just that and if he did take the Iron Throne he would need to name an heir one Celis couldn't provide but if he acknowledged Naruto Naruto whose skill with knives was unmatched. Naruto who was old enough to marry Naruto who would beyond a shadow of doubt remain loyal yes that would work out well very well. Indeed so Naruto began slowly raising a finger let me go this straight you wanna sack King's Landing you want me to do what exactly come with you can you still climb of course I can still climb Naruto spit into a corner how do you think I keep getting out of this bloody tower Stannis glanced at the window considering if I were to tell you to bring me Joffrey's head would you do it he asked at length if I were so inclined Naruto answered swinging himself back inside and Cersei's happily seven. Hells I'll need 20 good men as some warned holding up a finger some won't be coming back you'll have my best they better be fucking balls as Stannis frowned at the crass tone wielded by his son you should pray more and swear less blue eyes glittered with mirth but I don't pray father then they burn red I never have time skip drums and that's my cue to wrap this up Naruto hummed quietly as he heard the distant cry from his perch on the battlements his knives had already tasted Lannister blood. More than once tonight, and the siege hadn't even truly begun alone working from the darkness as a silent vanguard he'd already inflicted more damage on Tywin Lannister's precious legacy than any of his father's ships would it was imperative that they secured King's Landing before reinforcements arrived which made his task all the more vital 20 good men indeed 20 good men were dangerous led by him 20 good men were downright lethal doubtlessly as blades and theirs would drink there. Phil before the night was through he paused considering his next targets the hound nope all kinds of nope he knew better than to mess with a man like that by himself the imp seemed ashamed to kill him just yet he was a competent strategist but beyond that a good man good men were in short supply these days even if some of them were Lannister's Joffrey well that decided things positioning both feet on the ledge he gathered himself up took a running start then he fell upon Joffrey like a shadow. Time skip Shireen saw the door swing open saw him standing there then she squealed your back her guest was scarcely a step through before she bolted from her bed and tackled him well as much as a little girl could tackle her considerably taller and older brother Naruto for it was Naruto indeed grunted audibly in surprise and caught her steadying himself against the wall strong arms encircled her holding her tight and swinging her around in a happy circle for a brief fleeting eternity Shireen was weightless freed from the four walls around her the iron door that sealed her in this room and all the cares that came with it alas all too soon her beloved brother released her gingerly he lowered her toward the ground Shireen squeezed him tighter Naruto oof alright alright I'm happy to see you too a note of amusement crept into his voice as she strengthened her hold on him you're getting strong I might be in trouble at this rate Shireen knew he was lying she had once seen him lift in an entire cart by himself before that he'd broken a man's arm for speaking ill of her even so she didn't care suddenly a thought occurred to her he'd come through the door Naruto had not used the door since since why didn't you use the window she asked you never use the door anymore Naruto arched an eyebrow notice that did you think of it as a special occasion stepping away she realized he was wearing armor as well not the heavy plate of soldiers or guards but the light leathers one might expect from infantrymen all black with none of their father's colors he looked like a thief in the night than her brother but the smile was as all the same one she hadn't seen in a very long time now Shireen was a learned girl she knew few things were capable of making her one and only brother give a grin like that anymore coupled with his usage of the front door and act that was near guaranteed to get him caught and it was easy to put two and two together is father making you his heir she deduced I was wondering when he would do it her brother froze mouth half open how in blazes did you Shireen beamed happily twirling away from him I knew it I knew when he came to visit me that he'd pick you behind her Naruto went very still visit you mmm Shireen plopped down on the bed and spun to face him he came to see me a few hours ago we talked and he mentioned me the blonde deadpanned striding to the window after her he asked you about me he didn't have to silly she answered swinging her legs to and fro really it seemed quite obvious to her father respects you and your strength of course he'd want you to be his heir why does that upset you indeed Naruto's bleak expression spoke volumes on the matter and what he thought of it she was one of the privileged few to ever see how he truly felt these days trust wasn't something he came by easily years of imprisonment had left him 
leery to most even their lord father he loves you you know she added prodding love ha a muffled snort reached her ears you always were better at understanding these things than me the scar girl nodded emphatically of course mother always said naruto was a demon a devil a creature born out of darkness and spite and that she was not to speak him why would she say such awful things naruto was her brother oops half brother he was nice he always snuck in during the night and read to her when she couldn't seep sometimes he would even sing to her when she wouldn't he had a terrible singing voice but she loved it all the same and loved him for trying he cared for her and she cared for him because Shireen loved her brother it seemed a silly thing to think to feel but she did with this thought in her heart she dared ask what she'd been dreading all this time that Naruto was wearing armor and his daggers meant one of two things they were either under attack unlikely as the bells weren't Ringing or he was gearing up for departure on father's orders neither thought was particularly appealing Naruto might be stronger than most but he could be hurt she'd seen it before he could get himself injured or worse he could die there were worse things to happen of course that eerie red woman could get her claws into him Shireen shuddered at the thought there was just something very wrong about Melisandre she couldn't put her finger on it but whatever it was she had good reason to want to. Stay away from that woman thankfully Naruto felt the same but the thought of him being out there alone away from her was nearly enough to make her nigh but mourn the truth, one that she already knew are you going away she whispered full of questions aren't you her brother laughed at her small fears, uttering a wry bemused chuckle as he moved to sit beside her Shireen didn't resist when an arm encircled her shoulders didn't fight when he pulled her head into his chest her fingers fisted tight. Against his traveling leathers of their own accord as though she could somehow stop him from leaving it felt painfully like another one of his farewells perhaps the last one if he was riding off to war for father's sake you or aren't you she demanded looking up at him intently his smile collapsed abruptly sucked away into the void Shireen stared back right at him piercingly so just for a bit he conceded with a nod Shireen's gaze, fell to the floor I made something for you you know Naruto said awkwardly suddenly drawing her curiosity once more I was going to wait until your next name day but given the circumstances I suppose now's as good a time as any he pressed something into her hands and her palms curled around it and held fast when next Shireen dared to look the sight of it nearly took her breath away it reminded her of the presence that the onion knight her good friend Sir Davosoft gave her indeed, at first glance it might even have been mistake for one of them her fingers traced slowly over the small creature for a long moment before she realized what it was Naruto's favorite animal the one he claimed to see every night and his dreams carved with loving detail and every edge from its high bearing nine tails to the curvature of its snout it stared back at her odd it almost seemed to be smiling it was a small wooden fox when did you make this she marveled at it turning the item end over end spent all of last week working on it Naruto laughed nervously it was one of those rare sounds he made when he was being true with himself tears gathered in the young girl's eyes it was his finest work yet and she felt utterly unworthy of it Naruto I can't oh no you don't I want you to keep it here he replied stoically forcing her fingers around the small idol totem with his own it'll keep you safe until I return he did not say if when in his mind his return to Dragonstone was an absolute certainty Shireen admired that his courage unflinching resolve he would do whatever father asked and more and would come back to sing songs to her in that terrible awkward voice or maybe he wouldn't maybe this was his time a thought she didn't relish and there was nothing she could do about it well it's getting to be that time Naruto rose and turned to leave sweet dreams abruptly he paused thought better of it fuck it he muttered to himself before Shireen could ask what he meant by that her brother darted backward and swept her up in an embrace so fierce she nearly felt her bones break planting a soft kiss against her forehead he lowered her back to the bed once more and tucked her into the covers he lingered a moment longer shook his head and embraced her again stay safe sweet child Shireen's heart caught in her throat choking the words you two brothers she whispered with a wan smile Naruto departed leaving her with her thoughts that was quick Stannis was waiting for him near the stairs as he closed the door his normally stern countenance all but Unreadable Naruto nearly snapped at his father for his brash impatience but remembered to held his tongue at the last instant he couldn't fault his old man for wanting to get underway any more than he could his love for his sister not the kind of love those Lannisters perpetuated of course but something far more pure the love one had for a sibling for family was something that truly could not be understood by outsiders let alone expressed through words love made you do all sorts of things. Terrible things horrible bloody things satisfied Naruto paused drawn fro his thoughts blinking as his father spoke to him no he said at last nonplussed they descended the stairs together in relative silence after that the tension broke and only the muted footfalls of their muddied boots Stannis struggled for words that wouldn't come something to put his bastard at ease it stemmed from equal parts concern and desire both. A father's loving albeit somewhat awkward concern for his son and a commander's desire to ascertain his own soldier's readiness for the task at hand whether he was or wasn't mattered greatly, 
the difference between victory or defeat life death your men think I'm a monster Naruto spoke suddenly drawing a concerned look from his sire they might not obey me it doesn't matter what they think Stannis replied flatly taking another step in stride you are what you are and what do you think I am father in that fleeting eternity the waning light of a nearby torch cast itself across his face painting his shadows into something monstrous Stannis wondered if it was a sign of some sort his boy was terribly clever might even pretend to be civil behind closed doors for Shireen's sake but they both knew his grasp on reality was tenuous at best non-existent at worst he was about to unleash a demon on King's Landing one of his own making a force he had little to no control over Naruto might as soon sack the city as take it for his father was he making the right choice here Melisandre had cautioned him time and time again against releasing the boy she insisted that Lord of Light would grant him this victory with her at his side that the bastard wasn't needed time and time again she had pleaded with him to ignore Davos's counsel but Stannis was nothing if not stubborn he was many things aggressive brutal cold determined genuine honest but as he was in all things Stannis Baratheon was not a liar you are my son Naruto nearly missed a step I suppose I am a brief flicker of emotion flitted across the boy's face Stannis grunted satisfied Naruto was his son in that area at least his loyalty was absolute at length they came to the door itself Stannis knocked and it swung open straight away, leaving the courtyard of Dragonstone stretched before them in all its glory dim in the night but no less imposing for it Naruto followed after him smiling softly Stannis supposed he understood this was the boy's first day as a free man after all no longer would he have to creep through the shadows avoiding guards now he could walk openly among them Naruto took a deep breath exhaling sharply then his eyes drifted towards the gate paused narrowed widened shadow allowed when he answered Naruto's gaze snapped to Stannis with such force his head seemed ready to tear itself from his shoulders you kept my horse he exclaimed breathlessly shadow before Stannis could answer Naruto bolted shadow certainly lived up to his given namesake he was a great large stallion black as raven and thrice as fierce wild as the storm itself he had refused to breed or be ridden by anyone beyond its master since Naruto had gotten himself locked away all those years ago now the beast reared mightily nearly ripping itself free from its handler before its owner crossed the yard indeed Stannis had kept the beast well fed and groomed while his boy was imprisoned it lacked for none of its partner's enthusiasm the horse tossed its head and stamped a hoof at him in challenge as he drew near Stannis wasn't about to gratify that with a response it didn't matter in any event Naruto was positively giddy best father ever he cried remember when we used to ride together I'd race you but I always lost Stannis did remember it had been a simpler time a happier time you ride within the hour he reminded his bastard watching him keenly whilst he tenderly stroked the beast's head no colors you're posing as a band of sellswords at this point they'd be a fool to turn you away until we slit their throats Naruto mused quietly as he tugged on a strap securing the last of his gear on the horse you know I never thought the Lord of Dragonstone would dirty his hands with something like this surely there are better ways cleaner ways by way of answer Stannis offered a noise somewhere between a grunt and a sigh you sound like Davos do I maybe he's right a haunted look flashed across his father's face cleaner ways don't win wars allies do Naruto pointed out grasping the mount's reins when it tried to canter you're not gonna have any if you keep assassinating everyone who threatens you just do as I say exasperated by the boys continued impudent Stannis experienced a great and terrible anger roiling inside of him like a wild beast clamoring to get free from its cage secure the Stark girls then kill Joffrey and Tolman mount their heads on a spike if you wish he added after a moments thought if you must spare the queen or the imp that'd work just as well Tywin Lannister isn't likely to attack the city not if we're holding one of his precious children hostage but kill the boys I'll hear no more of it beyond that oh yes you will Naruto slung the words right back in his face before he could finish you're going to draft the letter and send a raven to mace Tyrell right now tonight Stannis glared back as his boy incredulous if there was a point he wasn't seeing it why because he's a dirty little bootlicker who'll back the winning side or whomever has the largest army as heir replied as though it were the most obvious thing in the world with Renly's forces added to our own and our new ships that'd be us for the time being Tywin's too busy with Rob Stark to march on us yet. He thinks the young wolf's going to move on Casterly Rock how do you know this Stannis blinked their own scouts had reported no such activity how else Naruto beamed happy to at last half. His father's full and undivided attention I already told you I hear things whispers among whispers as I said you can be damn sure Mace will do whatever it takes to make his daughter queen right now he thinks the Lannisters are the surest path to that goal unless I can sway him Stannis interjected with a shake of his head unlikely a blue eye swung towards him you're capable of murdering your own brother my uncle and yet you don't think you can do this that's one thing and another no it isn't his 
Sun shot his protest down like a raven in flight Marjorie and Loras may loathe you for what you did, but they won't defy their father and you're proposing what exactly now you're getting to the meat of it came the nod offer him riches lands a betrothal whatever you please him on second thought the blonde paused on a sudden considering better send that raven to his mother Olena those Tyrells may hate you for stealing their chance at royalty, but if you offer them another better opportunity Naruto continued shrugging on his cloak even the queen of thorns will bite all we have to do is bait the hook and you think they'll bite ha naruto scoffed i think we know who holds the real power in high garden whether out of fear or foolishness they won't refuse us but make damn sure you don't have mace riding against you when you come to take king's landing if he joins forces with tywin and attacks from the rear you'll be smashed against the walls of king's landing a note of audible pain crept into the bastard's voice as they each considered this I'm you son but I can't fight an entire army for you I may be good but I'm not a miracle worker you'd be willing to marry Marjorie then Naruto made a gagging sound no but I will do my duty I seem to recall you saying the same to Walder Fry once Stannis mused thoughtfully when he offered you one of his daughters you turned him down in the end ugh the boy shuddered visibly don't speak of him I'd kill that old lek if I could you were seven I Naruto snarled crossly and if I knew how to use a knife back then I would have shoved it right up as any more suggestion Stannis quipped dryly before the young man could continue as a matter of fact yes Naruto replied thoughtfully his brief flash of anger fading Rob Stark the brief flicker of amusement Stannis had once felt guttered out at the mention of that name oh oh he didn't like where this was going not one bit what about him you need to make peace with him Naruto pleaded earnestly before your assault the young wolf he is no ally of mine Stannis bristled coldly an upstart pup who's bitten off more than he can chew he'll be crushed just like the others is that so Naruto guffawed openly exploding into scornful laughter seven hell's father if he's an upstart what am I I'm only a few years older than him and you're sending me to attempt regicide I'll not hear of it that was the wrong thing to say Stannis realized that the moment those words burst from his lips he wasn't accustomed to his children talking back to him his son had gone beyond that to outright questioning every bit of his authority where Shireen was happy yet silent in her protest Naruto was determined and fierce easily provoked and driven to anger which was precisely what he'd just done oh I get it like a spark to fire the whiskered warrior drew back incredulous is that all I am to you then a blunt tool a silent hammer to smash against your enemies don't turn this on me Stannis warn this isn't about you but it is that's the truth isn't it Naruto challenged clicking his tongue you don't want me to advise you you just want me to kill for you no more get off your high horse and listen to me for once in your life old man his only son rounded on him with such vehemence that the lord of dragonstone nearly drew his blade outright he only wants the north to himself and can you blame him that little toy of a Lannister took his father's head and holds his sisters captive tormenting them daily he's as much an ally in this as any more than most promise him the vengeance he so desires give him his sisters let him have the north do that and he'll bring his banners to your cost 20,000 men and what good are they men between us and Tywin Lannister's wrath if this siege goes south that's what Naruto roared back eyes flashing like dread rubies because without me it will with that the boy's outburst abruptly ended and silence rushed in to fill the void falling over the two Baratheons like a wet blanket thick and cloying Stannis glared at his son with a thunderous expression and Naruto returned it with a blaze of his own just as it had been back in the sealed tower it seemed that neither would yield at length one spoke. I I Naruto growled will do as you ask I will send a raven Stannis relented to common sense with a sigh at Naruto's smug expression he hastened to add on your head be the consequences if he or Mace Tyrell refuses he almost hoped that they would. If Naruto's incredibly unlikely idea did succeed he'd never hear the end of it even if he did take his rightful place on the Iron Throne I know men almost as well as I know women father the blonde said his soft voice hard we only have to plant the idea now if you'll excuse me he spun back to shadow without another word and yet another beat of silence forced itself between them Stannis nearly growled in exasperation how did this boy always manage to make him look like the villain it was ridiculous he didn't deny that the boy was just like his mother as sharp with the sword as he was with his wit but this this pushed boundaries even for him this all hinges on you with nothing more to say he found himself driving this point home once more make me proud for a moment naruto seemed to consider those words then those blue eyes hardened into diamonds i will do whatever is necessary stannis grunted quietly good he'd never been any good with open displays of affection even in his youth war and rebellion had hardened him forged his body and soul like iron but he loved his children even if he didn't truly know how to show it even so he surprised himself with his own actions Naruto started the first open act of emotion on his father's part shocked him greatly the firm embrace lasted all of an instant but the look of utter consternation and utter befuddlement on the lad's face was well worth it he decided try not to burn the city to the ground a hand lingered 
Grasping the boy's arm Naruto grinned I learned from the best in the end the Lord of Dragonstone relented watching with a practiced eye as his only son and heir waltzed away from him capering towards the men he would soon lead into battle this lot had been selected just for this task men who didn't deem themselves too noble to kill women the sort of killers who would use poison surprise or even outright treachery to accomplish their goals these men they weren't soldiers they were butchers criminals and they were being led by the worst madman of them all his beast of a son who put on airs and pretended to be something he wasn't he would either lead them to victory or get the lot of them killed either way heads would roll stannis waited just long enough for his son to meet the men telling himself he wanted to make certain naruto wouldn't kill any of them then he would depart he had letters to write after all so you're the one leading us naruto looked away as he felt the weight of his father's gaze settle firmly upon him in the end that was as much an admission of confidence as he'd ever received from his parent turning to address the men who would be serving under him he found himself rather appalled all things considered he'd asked his father for men who didn't fear death men who were pretty damn ballsy as he'd so eloquently put it these lot they were most likely murderers rapers and thieves vile looking bastards the lot of them the goliath who'd spoken proved no exception i he was a tall one a great big brute of a man standing nearly two heads taller than him bearing an equally large axe Naruto imagined this fellow might give the mountain a run for his money in that area alone he certainly had the personality down pat dark of hair with a square jaw and a scarred face he scowled down at him exposing yellow teeth and rotting gums is it you the man repeated I he flicked the man a dark look that'd be me you got a name so Stannis sends a bastard to Lead us the giant disdain ignoring him shows how much he cares I am a bastard Naruto chuckled a lot of you are probably bastards too we're a regular band of bastards a boy's laughter greeted his words Stannis knew his son. He knew what was about to happen as soon as the men started to laugh once his son began to laugh with them he wasn't at all surprised when Naruto decked the instigator hit the man so hard the dirt seemed soft by comparison when he crashed into it the poor sod yelped like a struck pig and lay there in the mud groaning by the time he finally recovered the laughter at all but died a deathly pall seized hold of the courtyard the night broken only by the man's groans and crackling of torches you little shit with a roar the brute came up spitting and swinging Naruto knocked him right back to the ground again before he could draw his weapon what in seven hells was that well that was me knocking your ass to the dirt rolling his shoulders, the young commander turned to face the rest of his men feeling more alive than he had in years any more questions on who's in charge here when none dared to speak against him he decided to take that as a show of acquiescence right then he continued scowling my father's probably paying each of you an absolutely ridiculous sum of money to complete this task and if you want to live to collect it i suggest you remember that now i'll have your name speak up marcus roth Toph gavin the giant he'd felt growled around a swollen lip Ulrich so the endless list of names rattled on and like any good commander Naruto committed them to memory one by one Marcus was an unparalleled lockpick or so he claimed Roth and Toph brothers he suspected knew their way around a bow Gavin boasted skill with twin daggers and infamous cutthroat and flea bottom who'd fled to escape the authorities Ulrich was little more than a brute but Naruto was surprised to learn that he was an umber not a wilding from beyond the wall as he'd Suspected he looked like he knew how to swing that axe of his at the very least he was just about to move down the line when he heard another voice Eleanor Flowers formerly of High Garden. all eyes turned to the one who had spoken Naruto included his mouth drew down into a frown as a lithe figure stepped out amidst the others he'd almost missed her in the dark her smaller body hidden by the larger men that frown drew deeper still as she removed her a deep green eyes framed by a bewitching red curtain of hair cut severely short well below her chin with a matching scar against her neck her face might have been called soft in another life now there was a hardness to it a bitterness unmatched by those surrounding her an anger that few could hope to know we have a lady among us it seems she gave the speaker a once over and frowned unimpressed that's a noble name Marcus muttered from a noble house I, I was she replied simply flex of emerald flicking toward him I'm not anymore why might that be Naruto found himself asking what you want my life story or something she scoffed fine my mother was a red wine father was a visiting Lannister who raped her came the harsh reply obviously the latter wouldn't claim me mother didn't take kindly to my habits after a while either so here I am on my own a cell's word what habits were thunk the jagged edge of a curved shield slammed into the ground with enough force to startle the nearby horses Naruto whistled softly eyeing the indent mere inches from his foot had once been if he hadn't moved at the absolute last instant there he'd be missing most of his toes with a sharp tug Eleanor ripped her unconventional slap the sharpened instrument onto her back to join its twin and afforded him a grim smile he knew the answer to his question in that instant but her words confirmed it killing Lannister's Naruto whistled softly and offered a grin of his own welcome aboard the rest varied wildly in their chosen profession beyond that in both origin and otherwise 
There was even a man who'd apparently fled from the watch and found refuge with Stannis poor sod wouldn't give his name so he was dubbed Shaggy thanks to the tangled mess he called hair and his bristly beard he didn't protest the name they all seemed to hold one thing in common however for better or worse some reason or another they all despised the golden lions, and who are you Naruto? Asked as he came to the last of them this one looked downright tame compared to the gang of cutthroats he'd just seen by contrast the boy had no weapons beyond the sheathed sword in his belt his leathers and cloak were more that of a seafaring man than a warrior and he didn't seem to have a violent bone in his body indeed he seemed almost lost amidst Ulrich Eleanor and the others but he straightened up sure enough under Naruto's glare and replied in a firm strong voice, Mathos M Lord any relation to Davos he asked. Intrigued the lad faltered momentarily but managed to recover his son M Lord Naruto frowned stop with that M Lord crap the assassin waved him off just Naruto will do on little more than a bastard given command for now no need for titles he paused as a dark thought occurred to him say does your father know you're here no wait I know that look he doesn't does he Mathos looked away shamed he does not M Naruto he hastened to amend at the blonde's withering glare as grace thought I might be useful to you useful how I know how to sail that is my way around ships and I'm good with a sword when the bastard didn't interrupt he dared to press on people please sir don't turn me away he stammered out I have faith in the lord of light I have faith in our cause I have faith in the son of the true king Naruto arched an eyebrow Stannis isn't king not yet but he will be the lad insisted great Gavin muttered he's religious little man Ulrich grouse blackly won't be much use in a fight shut at the lot of you in that moment Naruto understood why Stannis had sent him this seemingly unaccomplished lad to aid him here was someone whose faith in the Lord of Light and by definition Stannis was nothing short of absolute in its sincerity he was loyal where others might not be faithful where another man might be paid off devout it seemed Matt Hose was precisely that almost absurdly so it certainly helped that he knew a thing or two about ships perhaps that knowledge might prove useful in the capital. All right he relented dismissed get your gear and horse ready with the others thank you sir Arg don't call me that off with you the lot of you we leave in five minutes the son of the stag lingered a moment longer as his unlikely band rushed to the horses suddenly aware that his lord father was no longer present in the yard just as well he wouldn't want him to witness that lapse of wisdom just now you lead them well Naruto bristled even before the newcomer finished speaking because he knew precisely who or rather whom it was he'd heard her voice countless times before during his forays outside the tower and had always taken great pains to steer clear of her after their first encounter now it seemed as though all that work over these last five years had been in vain he saw her across the way coming towards him Melisandre granted he had only seen the red woman a handful of times before but he'd gone out of his way to avoid her each and every one of them having seen the effect she had on his father the webs she wove he had no intention of being caught in the lair of this spider that she dared to approach him now could only mean that she wanted something be it his confidence or his ear or something far more sinister he refused to give it her it took everything he had not to bolt as she drew near not out of any real fear of course but an emotion far darker my lady he forced throughout through gritted teeth to what do i owe the pleasure you're about to depart it was not a Questioned Shadow Winnie to new and tried to edge away from Melisandre Naruto restrained his mount by the reins and ruthlessly bit back the urge to draw his blade and stick it somewhere he shouldn't yes he said I'm afraid we're on a bit of a tight schedule and you believe you will succeed her eerie eyes flitted to Matt Hose and his band of renegades with them I believe we have a chance yes he ground out through gritted teeth a small group has a better chance of eliminating the royal family and throwing the city into disarray beforehand his hands clenched into fists and his back itching to wrap themselves around her throat more and more for every instant she spent in his presence it was only with a supreme effort that he managed to still them still the subtle look of scorn lingering in her eyes was nearly enough to make him start forward many of them do not believe in our lord begging your pardon read the assassin shot back icily but you don't need to be religious to swing a sword and you mean your lord I don't pray or did you forget I see I suppose you do Naruto shot back the wind took hold of her cloak as he looked on and sent it swirling in vile patterns like a carpet of living flame it almost seemed alive somehow as if her very shadow was trying to swallow as he drew back more than a little repulsed by the sight and the image it conveyed you're afraid of me she sounded almost amused noting his disgust I fear what is dangerous my lady he rumbled and you hate me came the smile something snapped deep inside Naruto like a dam breaking its floodwaters bursting forth as anger tore itself from him losing hold of the tenuous leash on his own emotions he surged forwards I hate you snarling the bastard swung around and took hold of her cloak looking her square in her startled eyes I despise you every word proved a furious hiss blacker than the darkest pit I'd gut you right now and toss you in the sea if I thought I could get away with it you have my father burning 
men and women at the stake in the name of your precious Lord of Light how long until Shireen or I find ourselves there how long until you convince him that his bastard boy and his figured daughter are sinners before you tell him we don't belong in this world you have the blood of the one true king within your veins her hand rose to cup a whiskered cheek and infuriated he shook it away I would never misuse you the look in her eyes enraged him even more whether it was his own intuition or Something far darker he knew not, but something drove him to speak again don't touch my sister on the contrary I did not come here to threaten you or your sister the red woman laughed melodiously since our lord's chosen has seen fit to give you this mission I came to bring you a gift withdrawing a pair of flasks from her sleeves she held them up for Naruto to inspect then offered them to him the blonde eyed the vials with a keen eye still wary of her, and this is throw them on the ground and they will produce a black mist no man can see through she offered it may be useful to you he snatched them up and stowed the flasks in his belt I'll keep that in mind I am offering myself as well Naruto nearly choked on his own spit I beg your pardon your mission is of utmost importance and it is vital that you succeed Melisandre continued in her strange placid voice I have been expressly forbidden from traveling with the armada she pointed out continuing I was not however forbidden from traveling with you I have twenty good men you're counting the boy and I don't need you he finished flatly I can give you a son she cajoled despite his own anger Naruto felt his cheeks turn red as a sugar beet are you mad he sputtered I have no need of children how do you think your father slew Renly Melisandre purred rich in her satisfaction my son slew him with no danger to your father then get another son off of him with your bloody magic I cannot the red woman shook her head the process will likely kill him I would require someone else her gaze seemed to bore into him as she spoke hauntingly so the implications of her words were clear and against his will he felt his eyes flick downward it was rather tempting wondering what was beneath that robe me Naruto deadpanned yes do you not want me something in her words snapped him out of the trance and the youth's hand flew to his dagger enough Melisandre backed away relenting for your sake I am going to pretend we didn't have this conversation he put in with a fierce bluntness leading his horse away briskly from her and that you didn't just try to defy my father's orders good evening lady Melisandre remember young prince she called to him the night is dark and full of terrors Naruto frowned I'm not a prince he called back never have been the red woman smiled in return but you will be her words chilled him setting his mount into an easy canter he started towards the gate where the rest of his merry little band had gathered he didn't dare Look back until he was certain the woman which had left the yard Naruto experienced unutterable relief once Melisandre was out of sight attractive though she might be the woman rubbed him the wrong way with her oft unblinking eyes and soft spoken manner her prophecies and eerie devotion there was just something off about her he didn't fear that she'd betray his father oh no rather he feared what she might compel him to do what she had nearly compelled him to do Stannis prized victory above all else but the way that this red woman shadowed him everywhere he went it was almost as if crazy which the blonde cocked his head aside as Eleanor capered up to him on her horse spitting curses her bright eyes burned fierce with barely restrained anger her face set in a stern scowl for a split second he actually thought she was going to chase after Melisandre and run her down now wouldn't that be a sight but no the redhead stayed her mount beside him at the last instant dashing that brief fantasy of the red woman's demise my lord she nodded in his questing stare those eerie green orbs bored into him like daggers and he returned her bleak stare with one of his own please tell me she isn't coming with us Eleanor said at last the words a silent plea Naruto shook his head she isn't good the young woman visibly deflated relieved that's good good thank the god she shook her head slowly the motion sending her scarlet tresses swirling wafting around her head like a halo in that instant he thought he saw something in those haunting green eyes a flash of vulnerability gone with the breeze whatever it was it vanished when next she looked at him curious the bastard stayed his feet her reaction was nearly identical to his own as you have something against her don't have to she's a red priestess Eleanor spat viciously on the ground and threw a wild look at him we have a more colorful word for them back in high garden my lord I can't imagine what Naruto sighed and why must everyone call me that I'm not a lord take it from someone who knows once a lord always a lord her horse stamped a hoof impatiently and the smirk disappeared into the dust shall we then by your leave my lady he snarked back that almost got a smile out of Eleanor maybe you're not so bad after all my lord she answered loftily let's see how well you can ride Naruto grinned at the challenge now's as good a time as any I suppose mounting his horse the son of the stag cleared his voice and spoke in command hear me heads turned as the thunderous shout of his words pierced the yard demanding attention it was a trait inherited from his father he knew how to take charge how to lead Naruto took a small moment to savor the full weight of their attention it was a rich heavy feeling being in command again and the darkest part of his soul thrilled at the prospects of the impending slaughter to come he'd been holding himself back now for far too long now ignoring 
the voices in his head abstaining from his darker impulses and his hands itch to kill soon come with me and lay lions low he cried drawing his blade come with me and take king's landing come with me and claim your fortune come with me and have your vengeance they will sing tales of us we will be legends the terrible twenty the ones who destroyed the lannisters from within the killers of kings destroyers of dynasties with me now with me now loud cries answered him Haya, cracking the reins he sent his mount into a fierce gallop and pounded through the open gate some days later and so it went days of hard riding with nearly no rest followed they had to make good time to the capital before stannis set sail there was precious little time left for conversation for all they knew the fleet could be sailing to king's landing even now there would be no reinforcements if they failed they would be executed and the coming siege would be that much more difficult if they triumphed now and that Waylay riches and glory fame and fortune awaited so long as they succeeded they weren't even accosted on the road it was easy they were led into the city without so much as a passing glance. It was just as Stannis said King's Landing couldn't afford to turn away any sword even if they had to pay said swords to fight beside them King Joffrey forces were sorely undermanned and the crown was more than willing to pay any who would throw in with them against the coming storm of course someone had to. Be certain that these blades wouldn't turn on them at the drop of a hat someone who saw knives in every corner someone so excessively paranoid rightly so in this case that she felt the need to question him straight away almost too easy so really Naruto wasn't surprised to find himself trussed up in the middle of the night yanked out of the inn and brought before the queen herself Eleanor hadn't been happy about the interruption at that either. The guards had chosen perhaps the worst possible moment to interrupt while she was atop him he'd barely had time to bar the door and shimmy into something resembling his armor before they'd broken it was a piss poor way to ruin what had been shaping up to a fine evening what he was a man a man had his needs it helped that the son of stannis had been expecting just such a thing of course given cersei's reputation she wasn't half as smart as she thought she was a lesser man might have been horribly frightened by the whole ordeal but he'd lived through far worse he'd been beaten burned stabbed shot full of arrows fallen from incredible heights and lived to tell tales of them all by contrast a little late night roughhousing meant nothing to him it was all part of the plan rough hands flung the door open and hurled him down on the floor just a touch too harshly adding insult to injury someone slugged him from behind when he tried to find his feet his head kissed the marble floor with a loud crack and he tasted acid in his mouth blood Boiling Naruto narrowly managed to restrain himself and feign weakness instead of ripping the man's lungs out of his ugly mouth not now so he lay there groaning softly pretending to have no strength at all this is the one a rich cultured voice like poison honey trickled into his still shrinking ears not very impressive is he afraid so your grace one grunted didn't even put up a fight make him stand came the command he didn't need to see to know that his tormentors were smiling all right you get up a hand drew back to strike him again and Naruto lunged upward and slugged the man with enough force to shatter his jaw like glass he was out before his boneless body hit the floor cursing his partner spawn and moved to draw his blade only to find his very sword arm wrenched down with an agonizing crack he didn't have a chance to scream before a back fist drove him to the floor and into blackness two men beaten in twice as many seconds and not a sound was to be heard pausing to inspect the fruits of his latest conquest Naruto took a step back and bowed gracefully greetings your grace perhaps now that we've gotten the riffraff out of the way we could dispense with the formalities Cersei Lannister scowled Naruto simply smiled and awaited her answer in that time he took stock of the queen regent hair like spun gold a dress of Lannister red with more gold uck finally after what felt like an eternity he was able to lay eyes on the one responsible for all this trouble for getting his blood up in the first place only to realize she was no one at all just the simpering women who acted as if she had all the power in the world when she really had no claim to it all nothing at all he tamped down the instinctive surge of resentment upon realizing that this fool of a woman had allowed Ned Stark whom he'd nothing but good things about from his father to be slain in cold blood, while she stood mere feet away this was the mother of King Joffrey little shit and a woman who couldn't control her children was worth less than dung in his eyes a parent was meant to counsel and console a child not give them free reign to do as they pleased stannis had raised him with a firm hand and whenever he'd gotten into trouble the fault had been his own in that moment he did have one positive thought of the queen however she had nice cheekbones i should have you arrested the queen's gaze flicked to her two remaining guards neither of whom dared to approach this suddenly dangerous Interloper you've assaulted my guards ha some king's guard ah but there it was at long last that same scornful expression he'd been expecting ever since he'd left Dragonstone Naruto found he wasn't surprised by Cersei's replies. If anything the queen's less than subtle threat amused him for he had heard worse highborn threats before from those who were actually willing to back them up I did he. 
admitted handily nodding in admittance of his guilt, but to be fair they assaulted me first at the end he loosely nudged one of the unconscious men with a boot while I was having sex with a very lovely woman mind you you are a lovely woman yourself the words slipped out before he could think to stop his tongue or himself for oh he was enjoying this far more than he should surely you understand how it feels to be interrupted, during such activities at this remark Circe's eyes became thin angry. Slits of green what are you implying nothing at all my lady oh he was implying many things merely that one does not enjoy life long without a lover you must be lonely since his majesty died ah perhaps he'd gone a bit too far there brother fucker despite the danger the words danced at the tip of his tongue and he longed to speak them if only to see her expression honestly betting your own brother was nearly bad enough but to have children with them, to place a product of incest on the throne and let him do as he would who did that these days dark and twisted though he might be even he had limits apparently so did the queen because she all but exploded out of her chair fair purpling you come here into my city my home and insult me she shrieked you dare make threats I'll have your head threats your grace Naruto forced an innocent blink I am a humble cells word I do not make threats people pay me to kill other people threats he repeated shaking his head no I nothing of the sort promises now those are a different matter Circe's mouth twisted in a rictus of disgust and fury at this remark made absolutely livid at the subtle jab and Naruto was left once more to wonder at the mindset of this woman, a queen who acted like an impetuous little girl flinging threats that held little to no weight for him in all his years of experience he never had the privilege to meet royalty before he'd been cooped up at Dragonstone like a badge of shame ever since the incident sufficed to say he was not impressed some said the Lannister shit gold Cersei certainly had golden hair and she was indeed beautiful but in person she looked like a very harried woman who drank entirely too much for her own good he couldn't help but wonder if her grace was already deep into her cups when she demanded his immediate presence here he was suddenly immensely grateful that Eleanor had prevented him from bringing his weapons, they'd surely have been taken from him and then where would he be? Unarmed granted he was unarmed now, but at least he knew his gear awaited him once he escaped if he escaped not that it mattered, he was wholly confident he could snap the queen's pretty little neck with his bare hands if it came down to it evading the guards was another matter but one he still remained confident in but as much part of him wanted to simply lunge across the room and end her life at this very moment he recognized the ill timing of such a decision now was not that time putting. Promises aside to what do I owe the pleasure of this unexpected audience your grace he asked amicably sidestepping her ire as easily as one would a large log my men and I only just entered the city and I'm afraid they're not presentable at the moment I was going to present myself to you on the morrow and ask for you but get to the point the words were a hiss swallowing his laughter Naruto bent the knee before her I wish to offer myself and my men into your service Cersei blinked but recovered. Quickly from the shock of his proposal her reaction was much as he'd expected kill him meanwhile miles away Rob Stark was not a man of conviction once he made up his mind he could not be swayed more often than not he followed his heart in all things and though this had seen him no end of trouble he'd resolved to follow it through to the end when he'd gone to war he'd never lost a battle since never once felt the cold knife of fear, down his neck some might say he was too young to be afraid to know the risks and consequences of his actions perhaps he was now however he felt his hands tremble but not from fear rather excitement a pair of twin letters lay before him bearing the seal of Stannis Baratheon Lord of Dragonstone each was written in a crisp clean hand each was no different than the other and that they were written by the same man and though they contained two parts of the same letter overall it was well astonishingly blunt delivered by Raven and armed escort both which further drove the point home whomever had written these letters and he knew well by now whom had wanted complete and utter assurance that the message reached its intended recipient no less than ten armed guards had escorted a harried looking man to their camp to bring him the latter they'd arrived only days after the raven together they read, young wolf I offer my condolences on behalf of your father once I considered you an enemy recent events have given me reason to think otherwise I will not lie, my first instinct was to destroy you like the other pretenders but my son believes in second chances so for his sake and yours I offer you this opportunity there will not be another bend the knee to me swear your fealty and I will help you do what all your men cannot I am led to believe that you have no interest in the iron throne that you'd only wish for justice in the safe return of your sisters we shall see a man named Davos awaits you in the group that delivered the second portion of this Letter he is trustworthy give him your answer if deemed satisfactory he will send a raven to me and we will plan from there if I do not hear from you within a week or if Davos does not return I will constitute this as an act of war and march on your forces with all my might once I've taken the iron throne come with me to King's Landing join your forces with mine and I will allow you to remain king in the north I will not force Sansa nor Arya to marry my boy they will be returned to you and such. 
matters fall under the realm of your house not mine come with me and take back what the usurper has stolen from you come with me and take this city take back your pride the choice is yours I await your reply the one true king Stannis Baratheon yes blunt was the best way to put it baffled Rob read it over again peering over each word Stannis had a son he vaguely recalled hearing of something like that once then nothing more of it regardless this was a grand opportunity here before him and Alliance of sorts the idea of bending the knee to another king rankled him somewhat, but in the same vein Stannis had been upfront with him clear and concise in the realm of terms all he had to do was bend the knee and ride to King's Landing with him but a thorn of doubt pricked at him and held his hand back Stannis had more than a hundred thousand men at his back and now he wanted his did he dare trust him Stannis, was an honest man it wasn't in him to betray someone he knew that much, but did he? Trust him he knew he didn't have enough men to take King's Landing not on his own not yet and what if he refused Stannis outnumbered him ten to one if he didn't they be crushed like an ant beneath a giant's boot did he dare drag out this war any longer on the matter of pride alone when such an easy victory was offered unto him winter was coming his banner men grew more and more restless with each passing day they wanted to go home and once word about Talisa got out he'd lose Walder Frey's support in the end the answer was obvious rising he opened the flap to his tent and called for a guard bring Ser Davos to me he said my lord I have an answer for him back with Naruto is this really necessary Naruto hadn't moved when the remaining king's guard drew their blades nor had he blinked when they began a slow advance towards him he'd remained standing there all the while hands clasped behind his back his eyes never left the queen when they were finally within range he unclasped them Inside a sword passed through the space he'd been standing nimbly dodged in a flowing retreat one of the guards frowned and made a second attempt only to find empty air not blood at the end of his blade you're going to be difficult about this I see I'm afraid I am Cersei sneered I'm more inclined to send them your head instead I do not believe that would be entirely successful your grace Naruto restrained a thin smile of his own stupid woman did. She really thinks she could intimidate him he had no concern of his twenty being bought. You couldn't buy hatred like that or loyalty it made them difficult to control at times but in their days on the road he'd come to understand that his unlikely band wanted nothing more than to see Lannister heads mounted on a spike really it was almost frightening or it would have been if he wasn't so used to the concept you she snapped waspishly how so you would not be able to take my head because I Unlike that child beater behind you blue eyes drifted to Sir Marin Trant I am an accomplished killer and I practice regularly so no he answered stoically for and that at least he spoke the truth your guards would die terrible horrid deaths long before they could lay hands on me and there isn't a damn thing you could do about any of it Naruto finished with a demure smile watching her face purple all the while let her hate him let her seethe, in her spite in a few days it wouldn't matter what she thought of him you are unarmed and I have two men with their swords drawn she exclaimed irate what could you do but for now he had a role to play and he aimed to play it well might I demonstrate Naruto inquired smiling you can at least let me defend myself against one of your men I don't think so I need only your writing quill he interjected Cersei fixed him with a flat look she didn't believe him Naruto didn't expect her to he'd killed a man with less of course she didn't know that how could she you have two more guards and I am unarmed he pointed out quietly shrugging you said so yourself what could I possibly do if I fail I die if I succeed then you still have another guard by which to slay me but you won't and why not because you're going to hire me in a moment silence stretched between them like a band of rubber drawn taut and about to snap oh very well she sighed at last waving one of her men away humor me before you die Naruto nimbly caught the quill in hand and took three Steps backward you heard him Sir Marin Cersei said indicating the very child beater he'd spoken of prove your worth my lady if looks could kill the man would have been a smoldering pile of ashes on the floor kill him you fool Naruto drew back an arm smiling any last words friend the king's guard laughed you won't be able to do I have your permission to kill him your grace the blonde continued ignoring the abusers ineffectual rant Cersei arched an eyebrow intrigued he couldn't possibly you may try. Tramp balked what good Naruto spun and hurled the riding implement with all his might before the king's guard could finish. The resulting was nothing short of spectacular the quill leaped from his hand like an arrow from a bow slicing into Sir Marin Trant's unprotected throat as a knife would through butter burying itself deep and cutting off his cries entirely the armored knight gurgled in surprise gawking at the hole and his neck struggling to decide whether or not to pluck it on until Naruto did it for him in a single liquid movement the blonde crossed the room and reached around plucking the quill from the man's neck and opening his throat then he slammed it into his forehead Sir Marin Tranner tottered for a moment eyes rolling in the back of his head like broken marbles then as if at some unseen signal he collapsed face forward forced through his skull upon his awkward landing the impromptu dagger emerged into a grisly red spatter through the abuser's skull spattering the floor.
Crimson and Gore Cersei gopped mouth working wordlessly as the scarlet stain crept across the floor she had felt the impact most keenly as if she had been the one slain not her guard the remaining man looked like he was about to soil his britches instead of attacking however Naruto merely raised his hands showing himself to be defenseless once more if I can do that with a pen imagine what I can do with a sword the once. Pleasant words became a growl by the end as calm eyes dark and angry if I wanted to I could kill you right now and you wouldn't be able to stop me then I'd kill the next man who came through that door because you would scream when you died and the next eventually I'd escape and then I'd do the same to anyone who ever crossed me would you like that your majesty thusly rattled the queen I'd am warily. I would not what do you want as I said I would like to serve you your grace money would be nice. I suppose Naruto returned to one knee bowing and kneeling lying and scraping as if he had been born to it but what I truly desire is simple acknowledgement the chance to be a part of something greater than the life of a cell's word. To be a part of history these men as eyes rolled disdainfully in the direction of the quivering guard they are not men they are boys and armor boys who will die defending you when Stannis comes because they are not warriors you will die your children will die after a moment he added there is nothing wrong with protecting those you love now came his least favorite part the waiting for a moment naruto feared slash thought she'd call his bluff and have him killed anyway he hadn't been lying when he claimed he could kill her and her guards but he could only kill so many before he slipped still cersei maintained her silence still then her expression turned thoughtful leave us cersei banished her remaining guard with a gesture but my lady leave us once the heavy door had closed she fixed the blonde with her most withering stare talk late the next morning in High Garden. Mace Tyrell felt as though he'd read the letter a dozen times now the words stared back at him from the parchment clear and concise Tyrell if you still wish your daughter to be queen you have a choice to make I suggest you choose wisely the one true king Stannis Baratheon. How long had it been since the raven had delivered this he couldn't even remember such was the stress how I had a few lines driven him so mad what had once seemed like a clear path to glory for his family only days before was now a murky muddled mess one he didn't know how to get himself or his family for that matter out of by right and law Stannis was king if the rumors were to be true then Joffrey had no claim on the throne at all Mace didn't much care for word of mouth no he wouldn't be telling Tywin Lannister of this not at all there was too much to consider a fool he might be but he knew better than to back the losing side but which was that Stannis rumor had it he'd slain his own brother and taken his banners for himself now word was the young wolf had gone to treat with him in person from Dragonstone it was a short sail to King's Landing and with those numbers Stannis would surely wreak havoc on the defenders yes it was all about the numbers numbers added up in the end Tywin might prevail in this then again he might not would it be wise to push this alliance with them through or should he wait and see the victor for himself Lord Baelish had worked tirelessly to negotiate such a pact but that was before this odds that might have once swung in the Lannister's favor were now beginning to tip ponderously towards Stannis Baratheon and his would-be ally in Robb Stark Lannister or Baratheon Joffrey or Stannis only one could emerge victorious from the coming battle of Blackwater but which was which worse if he backed the losing side he had no doubt he'd be annihilated all the Lannister gold in the world wouldn't save him if he chose wrong fussing quietly he pushed a clenched fist against his skull seven hells once more with naruto and twenty you absolute bastard what can i say naruto crowed happily the next morning as eleanor wrapped herself around him when you've lived a life i have you learn how to appease highborn idiots or barring that intimidate them oh she swore she'd have me killed at the first sign of disloyalty and all that but what can i say the woman loves her children she'd to anything to keep them safe even higher killers like us seems almost a shame to kill em Ulrich muttered sipping at his ale almost Gavin scoffed Naruto snickered I almost more laughter followed after a harrowing evening resulting in a tremendous victory and a score of dead city watchmen on their behalf t was the fool's own fault for ambushing dangerous individuals late at night Naruto and company had retired to another well fortified inn and paid the man enough money to ensure possession of it. For the foreseeable future Stannis's gold hadn't gotten to waste here half of their numbers stood on watch in plain clothes near all the entrances doors and windows both to prevent another such intrusion or barring that eavesdropping if another such forced sortie was attempted by the city watch or anyone else the poor sods would find themselves sent right back in a bloody box from whence they came I can't believe the queen actually made you her personal. What exactly Roth asked pausing as he painstakingly crafted another arrow you didn't tell us boss ahem the blonde coughed his voice peaking in imitation of Cersei herself I believe the term was royal guardian and protector mmph Eleanor clamped a hand around his mouth before he could continue quiet you she chided tightening her grip loose lips make for loose talk even positioned as she was on his lap his fellow bastard held his attention we can't keep talking like this when she finally spoke again he turned the full weight of his 
gaze upon her her green eyes piercing is like jagged emerald daggers have you forgotten that the spider dwells within this city with all of his little birds none of this must leave this room those scorching orbs swept across the room pinning each man in turn not a word spoil sport gavin grumbled returning the whetstone to his blade anyone tries to rat on us we cut their throat dead men tell no tales and slaughtering innocence doesn't she challenged coldly swerved for me so far the one-eyed man Sneered don't see why not a beat of silence passed between the lot of them broken swiftly by the another so a boss Toph began echoing his twin's earlier statement does that make you Joffrey's knight of no Naruto moan don't remind me Mathos and I have to meet the royal twat by noon today where's the little bugger anyway Gavin asked looking up from his now freshly sharpened blade reconnaissance was all Naruto would say he's got Max with him he'll be by short as if waiting for that very moment a series of harsh thumps echoed against the northern door a cod rattling off as he listened one knock then two followed by four naruto had designed such a system in hopes of fooling any would-be intruders or spies who might come calling each and every one of his twenty had a different one and wouldn't be admitted without speak of the devil eleanor fixed him with a dry look i'm coming with you max and matt hose will be more than her glare intensified fine fine he relented max will stay and you can take his place sound fair my lady as shield warrior flashed him a grin as you say my lord I told you not to the door swung open with a harsh clang interrupting whatever else he might have said Matt host shambled and helping a swearing max one look at the stalwart man told all. His left leg was a bloodied mess wrapped up in what one could only assume had once been cloth of some sort a beat of awkward silence fell in the end until finally Gavin surged out his chair and barred the door with a resounding clang a furious oath answered him for his efforts seven fucking hells not so loud the hell happened to him Ulrich laughed Matt Hose grimaced helping the swearing soldier to a chair he threatened a guard and took an arrow to the knee oh seriously you did kill him right Naruto groaned pinching the brow of his nose please tell me the guard is dead tossed them over the wall Max grunted into the sea let's see him swim with that fancy armor did anyone see why Max and know the man hastened to add least I don't think so Matt Hose no one saw us my lord the boy responded clearly someone may have heard the shout though lovely shaggy frowned grunted a question and gestured with his odd fingered hand now we'll be fine Naruto hissed words dripping with sarcasm what's the worst that could happen sighing he pushed Eleanor off his lap and sat up was the information worth it Matt Hose told him in no uncertain terms wildfire and nasty stuff and so he did until duty called the halls of the red keep were rather gloomy all things considered under king joffrey's reign many of the flowers had been plucked and the prior decor stripped away everywhere he went he saw lannister red it was there on the walls and the floors and the ceiling servants scurried about with their heads down avoiding his gaze the few lords and ladies of the court who dared to look at him didn't do so for long the presence of his entourage saw to that the guards were even less friendly than he remembered their faces were openly hostile hands remained firmly fixed on their swords whenever they passed friendly bunch Eleanor muttered crossly look at them Matt Hose despaired at his left how can the possibly live in this squalor is this what their gods tell them to do quiet Naruto shushed him but his mind was elsewhere fear it was stronger so tangible as to assault his own senses he could taste it in the air see it in every averted gaze hear it in their whispered voices when he stalked by many of these people were outright terrified not of him but of what might happen if they lingered more than once he heard Joffrey's name pass their lips like a prayer sometimes a curse his name wasn't mentioned in the least but their faces were telling enough I have a bad feeling about this he suspected his audience with the king was going to be unpleasant this lot shouldn't be frightened of their own king a king was someone who served the people not the other way around Naruto quietly vowed to change that once the Lannisters were outed he might enjoy violence more than most, but he didn't relish fear well fear in his victims mayhaps but not in bystanders unless stop narrowly reining himself back in the blonde ruthlessly redirected his focus to the ceiling in the hopes of distracting himself he had to maintain the facade. This mask of civility wait until he knew for certain that his father was moving there would be plenty of time for killing then later be ready for anything he muttered to Eleanor I have the feeling our welcome won't be a pleasant one his right hand grinned always as if to echo that very thought a young woman in a torn blue dress hastened past them momentarily diverting their attention red curls lofted past Naruto's vision briefly framing a heart-shaped face and damp eyes something about it seemed familiar enough to jog his memory and slow his pace red hair red hair where had he seen that before it wasn't altogether an uncommon trait in King's Landing yet it caught at him all the same poor thing Matt Hose muttered Naruto paused what into the memory came back to him in a rush Sansa Stark had red hair he wasn't sure what prompted him to call out to her to speak to this strange woman he had never seen her before in his life yet something gave him pause she reminded him of a spooked rabbit in a hall full of lions terrified that something might spring out and devour her at any moment he knew how it felt the words were out of his mouth before he could think to take them back 
Lady Stark the last spun looking like a frightened doe clutching the tattered remnants of her dress about her shoulders eyes red and puffy from crying blinked back at him wholly bewildered am my lord not a lord Naruto soothed lowering his hand just Naruto a hired sword do you have a moment she eyed him wearily clearly wanting to flee I'm afraid we haven't met Naruto I must be going now wait just a minute you're hurting me Sansa cried out as he spun about and took hold of her arm and pulled her backward passerby glanced at the scene but no one dared to challenge him why would they most probably thought this girl an enemy of the court itself they didn't care what happened to her true enough her struggles were useless against him. Unlike Eleanor she hadn't been trained in the art of combat and possessed precious little strength to speak of however a thorn of compassion pricked him and held him back. Loosen his grip what would you say if I could reunite you with your brother he asked after a moment behind him Eleanor and Matt Hose bristled ah they feared he was blowing their cover and perhaps he was but something inside Naruto that small tiny sliver of humanity that still existed deep inside him wouldn't let it slide he imagined Shireen his own sister in this very situation sobbing terrified in tears her dress ruined and something furious sparked to life in him answer me he hissed would you like to see your brother again Sansa's face went blank my brother is a traitor she recited the words on road as if from memory I am loyal to my king look at her she's scared shitless Eleanor buled and before she could finish scowling none of that girl were not your enemies and what have we here Naruto spun to face the voice crap approaching down the corridor were not a pair of guards as he'd feared but someone else entirely a rather roguish looking individual who was clearly a hired mercenary of some sort, and a much shorter man bearing a golden badge on his tunic Naruto recognized the insignia dead away and released Sansa swearing softly to himself double crap well so this then was the infamous imp he'd heard so much about strange he didn't look the monster most made him to be oh he was short to be sure but beyond that he seemed quite normal even so Naruto felt himself bristle as Tyrion drew near anyone who'd been named Hand of the King even temporarily was worthy of respect and Extreme caution there was no telling what he might have overhead he hadn't said anything incriminating but no this looked more than suspicious only a day in the service of my beloved sister and already I find you plotting behind her back abruptly his stoic expression collapsed into a wry smile I'm joking of course no no by all means he waved them on merrily plot away anything that brings Cersei trouble is a welcome sight for me my lord Sansa curtsied hastily ah lady Sansa I'm terribly sorry for that mess in the throne room Tyrion replied I'm afraid I must apologize once again on my nephew's behalf and not at all my lord it was I who was at fault just Tyrion will do the dwarf shook his head I'll have a new dress made and brought to your quarters straight away you are too kind Sansa scurried away quickly before Naruto could get a word in and just like that the son of the stag found himself trapped with the hand of the king Matt Hose. looked like he wanted nothing more than to keep walking. Eleanor had gone positively rigid her eyes locked on Tyrion like a hawk as the silence stretched on Naruto was beginning to fear that she'd do something horribly foolish and get the lot of them apprehended or worse when finally someone coughed while Tyrion began here we are so it would seem Naruto ventured cautiously uncertain of what to say of how to explain this situation away. Can't say I've had the pleasure your lordship he found himself wholly out of his depth here uncertain what the man wanted with him encountering Sansa had thrown his thoughts into disarray meeting Tyrion hadn't been a part of the greater scheme either and he was forced to take a step back and reassess just what he would say to a man who could make the next few days a living hell for him if he wished what were you doing with Lady Sansa Tyrion asked abruptly Eleanor swooped in before he could think why don't you tell us what happened first ah that the Lannister actually had the good grace to look abashed at the mention of the incident I'm afraid my nephew's been in a bit of a sour mood as of late at the woman's questing look he frowned you haven't heard the young wolf join his armies with Stannis these words emerged as a painful grimace rumor has it they routed the mountain and now they're marching on King's Landing as we speak alas our wise king chose to take his anger out on Lady Sansa inwardly Naruto rejoiced yes he listened after all outwardly however he forced a small sigh of his own well that's poor news for me I have an audience with him at noon Tyrion blinked then turned his gaze to the garden where the sun was just now beginning its descent the beginnings of a smile plucked at his square jaw clearly he didn't adhere to the Joffreys everyone either I believe it's well past noon well the blonde shrugged kings can't always have their way now can they the hand of the king seemed to consider that for a moment then inexplicably he relented brawn he introduced meet Naruto he's to be your replacement once this mess is behind us or so I hear after a moment the cells word extended his hand Naruto took the offered arm and gripped it firmly fighting back a smile of his own here you knocked around some of my lads last night the taller of the two quipped the assassin blinked your men I wasn't aware you commanded idiots brawn chuckled I don't queen took charge of a few without telling me then he noticed Eleanor and who is this Death on legs the shield maiden quipped dryly Bron gulped noted if there's nothing else I should be going might I have a word Naruto froze Tyrion was no fool. 
he couldn't be baited or tricked like Cersei and he wasn't half as paranoid he was dangerous as acting hand of the king he had every right to be the slightest slip might give him away perhaps it might be better to just cut his losses now Eleanor was spoiling for a fight one he didn't want to give her but if it came down to it his frown. Deepen put on edge by the inquiry need something else your lordship given the choice would you choose peace or violence Naruto smiled thinly depends oh yep the killer found himself nodded slowly in agreement thumbing his chin peace is nice but violence I can understand violence I can predict violence I can control don't get me wrong quiet's all well and good when the violence is over a good fuck a bit of rest something to eat and right back to it I can usually tell which way a brawl or battle's going to swing that's the thing about peace though you can't you can't control it there's always someone else who wants to knock you down and once they do it starts all over again I'll leave you to it then he turned to depart oh and Naruto was at him the blonde blinked quickly good luck he knows with the king or not Naruto watched him go and in that instant wondered what in the seven hells just happened had he been found out Tyrion wasn't your typical Lannister by his treatment of Sansa just now he was downright atypical he genuinely seemed to care for the people of this city it was almost a pity he had to die didn't he on one hand talking to someone on his own mental level had been downright terrifying on the other he found that in hindsight he'd almost enjoyed their little verbal spar there were precious few beyond his father who could so easily take his words and turn them on their head Naruto sighed and strode to the doors hesitating someone's voice could be heard even through the thick plating and that someone did not sound pleased evidently Joffrey was taking the news of Stannis as well after all which in turn was going to make him even more of a bore than he already was he didn't have to ask to know that the brat was going to be a right and proper pain in his ass. Everything he'd heard about Joffrey thus far hadn't painted a very good picture of him and they hadn't even met yet exhaling softly he steeled both his body and mind for the ordeal ahead it was going to take all of his restraint and determination to survive this meeting without killing someone honestly it was almost enough to make Naruto want to turn around march out of the red keep and pretend he'd all but forgotten this blasted meeting but he couldn't do that without blowing his cover now could he little prick on a throne Eleanor brooded falling in beside him this'll be fun Naruto side let's get this shit over with with one swift push he forced them open the flicker of killer Intent was his only warning twain the doors had scarcely parted for entry when an angry bolt shrieked through them Eleanor's shield thrust itself up mere moments before it would have struck its intended target, the stern metal denting slightly as a crossbow bolt Carol met off at Naruto was not behind that shield any time that it had taken his right hand to raise her right arm he'd already moved to the right leaving the archer to look quite the fool indeed said archer awaited them at the end of. The hall Joffrey awaited him upon the iron throne crossbow half cocked his expression was absolute priceless. Naruto wonder if he could frame it when he inevitably took the boy's head ah what a fine picture it would make baffled eyes flick to Naruto in disbelief back to Eleanor then to where he'd been standing the woman shot the king of black look muscles jumping in her jaw she looked all of three seconds from lunging across the hall and shoving that crossbow somewhere it didn't belong Naruto was tempted to let her Joffrey seem to remember that there were other lords and ladies of the court present then and hurried to compose himself to no avail as the deathly silence would attest a fine shot your grace Naruto began loudly for all to hear I thank you for testing my reflexes Joffrey bristled yes well you're late he sulked sinking back into his throne like the petulant child he was I thought it prudent to see if you were as nimble as my mother claims perhaps it's the company you keep Eleanor made a noise of disgust but Madhouse tugged her back before the hot-headed warrior could do something foolish Naruto merely nodded in false agreement his attention already elsewhere it was very impressive the iron throne all jagged edges and melted swords it was both a thing of terrible beauty and immense sadness how many lives had been lost fighting over this thing in a rare moment of profound sorrow he realized that his actions here today and even in the near future would put nearly this entire city and many in this very room to the sword there would be raiding raping pillaging and plundering alike once Stannis sacked the city thanks in no small part to this foolish little twat who took it upon himself to be an absolute ass to everyone he met and what happened when his father took hold of it doubtless more bloodshed would follow all this for a game of thrones no not a throne he'd like to sit anytime soon all things considered I understand you killed Ser Mirren the boy was Continuing as Naruto came back to himself with a writing quill Naruto smiled softly at the memory I did your grace how Joffrey demanded sounding far too intrigued for the assassin's liking I wasn't aware that was possible easily your grace at the latter's muffled consternation he continued ably spinning his tail when you kill as I often as I do it must be up close and personal it can't be from afar oh no that simply one do I find you you have to watch the life leave his eyes to see them die. 
and know that you're responsible for ending their lives only a coward kills from afar surely your grace knows this Joffrey reddened why is my mother hired you lot your mother wishes you to be protected your grace Eleanor spoke up before he could think to stop her since you cannot fend for yourself a deathly Paul fell over the royal keep Joffrey balked what did you say realizing her mistake the shield maiden cast him an anxious look by now the king's expression had become downright murderous leaning forward in his chair Joffrey shrieked what did she say forgive her tongue your grace she spoke out of turn but her words were my own taking a deep breath Naruto stepped forward deflecting the boy king's wrath away from the worried warrior and onto himself it was I who meant to say that you cannot fight anyone who can't swing a sword is useless on the battlefield for all his efforts to be blunt he could feel the conversation getting out of hand the situation slipping away despite his best efforts if this was all it took to I should have your tongue cut out Joffrey raved you and your woman's Naruto could feel himself slipping when he reached for patience he found only anger you may try your grace I am the king yes you are the assassin snapped back with more irritation than he let on but until you can kill a grown man with a quill as I have you are not a warrior and as such an easy target he drew back a step exhaling softly and as such you do require protection you're fabled Kingsguard are useless against anyone of reasonable skill and your Kingslayer uncle is not here to protect you my men and I however are and we have been paid handsomely to do so but we cannot protect you if you insist on being unreasonable off with his head oh for the love of infuriated Naruto spun and lashed out with a knife before anyone could close with him the nearest guard went down with a wet gurge, collapsing in a bloody mess his golden armor stained red with gore Naruto was up the steps quick as you please before the dead man finished crumpling to the ground eyes livid it was Eleanor thought perhaps the most terrifying of him she'd ever seen the man had knife but vanished and the beast had come out to play kill you stupid insufferable little shit look what you've made me do the son of Stannis snarled he didn't hear Joffrey's reply if there was one the voices were hissing at him furiously drowning out all else a curtain of red draped itself across his vision the next man to Attack the enraged blonde found himself ripped off the floor and hurled across the room to the doors Eleanor and Madhouse balked at this inexplicably feat of strength but neither moved no one moved but Naruto kill and Joffrey backpedaled wildly at his advance until he retreat no more his back slamming down into the throne Naruto loomed over him a terrible specter of wrath but he did not touch the king the insidious whispers in his ear and his own mind raved all the more for this failure demanding action demanding blood it would be so simple they argued so easy why did he have to wait until the attack do it now take his head Cersei's head and all the heads of King's Landing they deserved it yes yes they deserved kill him a hand twitched toward his blade kill him no Joffrey collapsed backwards in a boneless help as the son of the stag leaned over him teeth bared like fangs Naruto sniffed noting with no small satisfaction that the boy appeared to have soiled his trousers good let the little King stink like the shit he was let him sit in his stink and no if you mean to kill me draw your weapon boy and draw it now Naruto hissed the man who passes the sentence should swing the sword so swing it if you dare no wild eyes the color of old blood fixed firm on the king make your choice here and now your men can't kill me and neither will you your mother ordered me to keep you safe and by the gods above and below I mean to do it even if it's from your own stupidity forcing a trembling hand from his sheath sword he straightened I'm not going to attack you this time don't do that shit again Joffrey didn't move tell his lordship I'll meet with him when he isn't trying to kill me Naruto snarled at the hound and informed the queen Joffrey's man afforded him a grim smile her grace won't like that sells word then you can tell her that her fucking son shot at me with a bloody crossbow for no fucking good reason he spat fling the expletive in his face she's lucky I didn't gut him like a pig now if there's nothing else I do believe our business has been concluded for the day for now spinning on his heel the blonde stormed down the steps at a brisk pace and marched out of the throne room Eleanor and Madhouse following at his heel neither said a word to him until they were well beyond the keep and within the streets king's landing and even then the talk was scarce it wasn't until they'd returned to their fortified and locked and barred the door that any of his party dared to challenge him with anything resembling a look that bad at Ulrich chuckled seeing the blood on the blonde's face piss off Umbra he speaks in due course finally Eleanor swallowed thickly and resolved herself to speak look back they're not a fucking word Naruto spun on the red wine slamming her into the wall with such force she was sure her head would fly off do you have any idea what you started the words were something beyond a hiss a snarl that barely resembled him at all what I nearly did back there when you couldn't keep your mouth shut Eleanor tried to meet that gaze and failed horribly something in her quailed at the eerily blank expression that her lover now wore she'd seen him snap in the throne room seen a new ripple in what had until now been a calm pool now she understood why Naruto wasn't saying you almost killed the king she ventured warily I almost killed the fucking king he exploded roaring furiously hands flying into the air to tear at his hair and what good would that 
have done her nothing no don't you fucking look away you're going to hear this every bit of it one dead king in a city prepared for attack not only would we have lost the element of surprise and tipped our hand but any chance of sabotaging their plans would be gone out the window i'd be dead and the rest of you would be hunted down like dogs and flayed for sport and we still might be after that outburst i can't believe you actually did that madhouse murmured the way you threw that man i've never Seen that in your eyes baleful blue orbs swept towards to him like wildfire silencing the sailor before he could finish Eleanor took that chance to slink away and salvage what was left of her pride everyone recognized the rift that had formed between the pair. Only time would tell if it would ever be repaired then inexplicably she paused at the edge of the threshold look I'm sorry he voice wavered it won't happen again just go Naruto groan into a hand please I said I was sore get Eleanor got. Wait 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 I thought you wanted to kill him Gavin frowned once he was certain she had all but sealed herself in the adjoining room I mean I get the speech but why not just kill all the bloody Lannisters now and leave them leaderless wouldn't that work just as well at the latter's silence he grew bolder and dared continue so far I'm hearing an awful lot of talking but you seem to be the only one doing the killing around here rising from his seat he thrust a knife at him across the table demanding when do we get to see some action the assassin growled softly it was the sound of a predator preparing to pounce you will we will on our terms now put that knife down before I shove it up your ass reluctantly Naruto complied when no one dared challenge him further Naruto reclaimed his seat near the hearth now he began icily we are going to go over the plan one more time days past plans were made discovered unmade and then almost before he knew at the time came the night of the Assault a cloaked shadow slipped out of the red keep and onto Lancel Lannister the poor sod never saw his death coming never felt the sweet kiss of steel against his skull until it was too late strong arms caught the falling body and ruined skull both marched them into a dark alley and left them there to rot with the rest then the shadow moved on clinging to the walls and avoiding the moonlight it lurked in the darkness slithered down the streets and vanished over the wall within moments it scaled the imposing cliff face and descended to a waiting boat that had been moored near the eastern gate once there it rode quietly towards a distant vessel strong arms pulling the small craft inexorably forward some might have found themselves lost in the fog but the shadow did not waver ever knowing of its destination barely there unless you knew precisely where to look insurmountable against the fog far from shore and the naked eye anyone else would have wound up rowing in circles trying to find something that simply should not be there but there it was and the man kept rolling after what felt like an eternity the wraith finally saw it a shadow against the mist rising up in the still waters he saw the emblem painted against its hull the mark of the burning stag he knew so well and sighed quietly to himself of the sight it felt like coming home a rope ladder awaited him against the hull docking against it the wraith secured the mooring and scurried up with all swiftness of a skilled Climber near the top a pair of firm arms reached down took a hold of him and pulled him up cold steel touched his neck in an instant only to be withdrawn just as suddenly when his vision cleared he found himself staring back at a bearded face worried and worn made haggard by stress but still one he knew in pair of strong arms like iron clamps encircled him and drew away holding him at arm's length God's boy look at you a hearty if worried voice greeted him you've grown Davos I almost didn't recognize you under all the mud naruto felt himself flush and for more than a little shame the man was like an uncle to him he'd always done right by him all these years and how had he repaid his kindness by riding off with matt hose in the middle of the night without telling he'd expected to be greeted with wrath and anger not this he felt he owed it to the seaman to explain look about matt hose i'm sorry for just spiriting him away like that mathos davos stiffened he's alive and kicking naruto found himself Beaming at the mention of the man's son and squire I wouldn't have pulled this off without him your boy knows his way around a ship his smile darkened and how to sabotage one mad hose had been impressive in that pursuit. Most impressive whereas the son of Stannis knew next to nothing of ships and how to sail them Mathos knew much that expertise had proved invaluable when the group had learned of the Lannisters plan to use the wildfire Davos's frown and words drew him away from the memory too. Soon sabotage what do yo before he could finish the sound of determined footfalls on deck demanded their attention soldiers formed ranks and drew aside Naruto turned to face the newcomer the ghost of a smile plucking at the corner of his mouth for who should appear but Stannis Baratheon himself the sea of men parting on the deck to make way for him Naruto inclined his head curtly but didn't bow much to the consternation of Davos by the time Stannis descended to the deck the blonde found himself smiling openly it felt like ages since he'd seen him last as though years had passed instead of weeks father and son locked gazes you need a shave stannis grunted after a long moment naruto laughed i suppose i do what do you have then just like that they were down to business naruto told his father in no uncertain terms what he'd been up to what he'd done the traps he'd prepared the confidence and trust he'd secured and the dark seeds of chaos that had already been sown and were just waiting to 
take root all that was needed now were the armies his father was to provide and at the end he waited for a response a word some mention of acknowledgement or the praise he so desired you exceeded my expectations that was as much a thank you as he could ever expect from his father and it pained him slightly it would have to do for now I don't have much time he warned they'll be missing me and I'll need to get back before you begin Stannis smiled then and it was a grim and dangerous thing that reminded Naruto precisely why he respected this man they'll be missing more than that once I'm through with them come and see with one arm he turned and swept a hand towards the upper deck cloak surling in the mist Naruto moved to follow him hastening up the steps after his sire he peered into the fog and frowned softly as it began to clear at first the sight didn't impress him but then as the mist peeled away tendrils of steam sweeping forth to reveal more and more sails he felt his spirits Begin to soar where did you get so many you told me I needed allies Strannis muttered sternly I found allies well you do best to keep them back until I'm out of sight Naruto replied frowning unless you want them to be cinders why wildfire he warned Tyrion's plan to cripple you your fleet would have been decimated if you charged and would Stannis seized on the word you have a plan. The boy beamed we've already begun without another word he leaped back into his tiny boat and began rowing like mad. For the distant shore this way yes my lady Eleanor ruthlessly swallowed another brewing insult as she followed the queen out of her chambers and towards the safe room her fingers twitched ruthlessly towards a hidden dagger as they walked longing to plant it between the queen bitch's shoulder blades right in the vitals severing the spine it'd be a fitting end for someone so vicious and cruel but she couldn't do it it wasn't the presence of frail young Tommen that stayed her hand she told herself. She just couldn't do it yet not yet keep up Gavin groaned quietly perhaps if my lady would stop speaking Eleanor was beginning to consider shoving that knife elsewhere now much to her charge and she and Gavin had been charged with the oh so important duty of protecting Cersei for the duration of the siege alongside an assortment of Lannister guards of course the real warriors were on the wall with Joffrey and anyone else he could scrounge up Naruto was nowhere to be seen nor found though the queen claimed he'd gone to protect Joffrey stupid woman why she would ever trust him to begin with was beyond her another tray of the Lannisters for her to hate as you say your grace Cersei opened her mouth to issue another venomous retort that was when they heard the drums it started slowly at first a distant rhythm in the air then it grew louder a furious pounding that drew closer and closer with each passing moment one drum then another and another and another still a cacophony of sound to tickle. At Eleanor's ears this eerie enchanting pulse that seemed to echo relentlessly over and over looping endlessly bewitching dark sails swept into exist and the mist made visible through the thin slit of the window numbering in the dozens no hundreds Cersei balked frowning what was that Eleanor sighed I'm sorry finally Gavin's roar of approval was the only warning before all hell broke loose Eleanor slashed with the razor edge of her poison blade, tearing a vicious rent in the face of her nearest companion the Lannister sentry caught completely unawares by the sheer savagery of her assault crashed against a wall screaming as he struggled to hold his torn visage together a quick thrust with her blade put the man out of his misery Gavin's assault was far more vicious in a single fluid movement the cutthroat sprang forward and slit the nearest guard's throat the blade bit deep and opened a red river there soon joined by another as he turned upon the remaining guard startled as he was the poor fellow didn't last a moment twin daggers buried themselves in the man's eyes and emerged in a grisly red spray two more men fell to their blades and then it was done and the dead were left to rot at the feet of those they had sworn to protect realizing their treachery at last Cersei shrieked and made to flee traitors she cried I'll see you hang for this Eleanor struck her roughly with the back of her shield sending the queen mother sprawl into the floor you're not in control anymore bitch Come here lad moving to block her Gavin plucked Tommen from the queen's grasp and flung the witch herself at Eleanor here you take the wench make her watch despite the man's demand she spun away averting her eyes as cold steel flashed out a killer she might be but something in her keen at the sight Cersei screamed no shh Gavin's voice cooed as a wet gurgle reached their ears quiet boy don't fight yes like that just like that when Eleanor finally dared look back again little Tommen was slumped on. The ground a broken puppet bereft of its strings tiny hands clutched a, a red hole and his stomach fisting feebly against the stain in his clothes Cersei all but collapsed in her arms the fight draining right out of her Eleanor let her go feeling oddly numb was this it was this what she'd wanted it felt hollow somehow empty her hands felt numb cold despite the armor they wore Cersei barely even noticed her remorse. No 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 tears come here I have a message for you from my employer. Then still smiling like the madman he was Gavin pulled the queen close forcing the distraught mother to look at him blank unseeing eyes regarded him as her child continued to cling to life a dagger flashed out like wildfire cutting wildly against the woman's face disfiguring her it was an ugly cut dragging over half of her face to tear out part of her ear a nasty ugly thing Cersei cried out and tried to scrambling away but Gavin merely held her closer still smiling he breathed the Baratheons. 
send their regards if Cersei if understood the meaning beyond the words her wails didn't show it then the bastard started cutting at her clothes that's enough Eleanor warned growing agitated when the killer didn't listen Gavin enough stop fuck you I'm getting my money's worth came the hiss what do you think I mean to rape her ha that'd be a mercy no I mean to rip this dress off her and parade her before the men do you have any idea what this bitch did to my family do you this is justice if you Kill her Naruto will kill you the boss wants me to do this Eleanor didn't stay long enough to learn if he was lying ships approaching Aeon that's my cue to wrap this up Naruto hummed quietly as he heard the distant cry from his freshly claimed perch on the battlements he and his precious twenty had already tasted Lannister blood more than once tonight and the siege hadn't even truly begun working from. The darkness as a silent vanguard they had already inflicted more damage on Tywin Lannister's precious legacy than any of his father's ships would it was imperative that they secured King's Landing before reinforcements arrived which made his task all the more vital 20 good men indeed 20 good men were dangerous led by him 20 good men were downright lethal doubtlessly his blades, and theirs would drink their fill before the night was through he paused considering his next targets the how nope all kinds of nope he knew better than to mess with a man like that by himself the imp seemed ashamed to kill him just yet he was a competent strategist but beyond that a good man good men were in short supply these days even if some of them were Lannisters slowly almost lazily he turned his gaze to his third and final target a pompous little fool stamping about the battlements like a petulant child shouting orders Joffrey well that decided things bonsai he muttered blackly to himself Positioning both feet on the ledge he gathered himself up took a running start and leapt then he fell upon Joffrey like a shadow do you hear that Tyrion turned slowly frowning as a distant whistling registered in his ears like the sound of a far off arrow or a distant explosion perhaps or something falling very very fast. That was ridiculous of course there was nothing to fall on their heads just yet for now they were safe for now yet still that infernal whistling persisted where was it coming? from did it stem from his own paranoia or was it something far darker the dwarf didn't know and not knowing was far worse what is that I don't hear shit dwarf the hound grunted then the shadow fell upon Joffrey where are the rest of them Tyrion dropped the torch and nothing happened he waited moments minutes what felt like arrows and nothing happened then as he looked on the ship began to list slightly at first but more and more noticeably until he realized what was wrong sinking before his very eyes the unmanned vessel began to yaw to the right away from the approaching fleet damn it Bronn if he was going to fire now was the time now before the ship sank but no arrow came and by the time Tyrion thought to order one of the men to knock one it was already too late the ship sank to the bottom of Blackwater and he felt his hopes for victory sink with it somehow someway someone had sabotaged their only hope for victory what's going on Joffrey demanded not now you little fool the boy purple I am your king and I command incoming it was a spectacular assassination that the bards would write songs off, bold precise thorough and absolutely lethal by the time Joffrey realized what was happening it was already too late to save him even as Tyrion realized something was amiss the assassin crashed down onto Joff's shoulders like a heavy bag of flour driving Joffrey to the ground with a dull crunch of bone meeting stone the savage assault had the added bonus of driving near everyone back affording the acting hand of the king a prime view of the king's last moment Aarg at this distance it was all Tyrion could do not to flinch at the lad's bloodcurdling scream his very blood shivered he felt the impact most keenly almost as if it was his own he heard the boy's back break and his heart twinged a cruel little creature though the king might be no one deserved such a fate if the killer took any pleasure in this his masked face reflected none of it blazing blue eyes leered out at him from within the slit of the visor narrowing intently then he started stabbing the king down came the daggers again and again descending mercilessly upon the boy's back puncturing armor and piercing vitals Cersei's vicious little bastard might have survived such injuries men had done so in the past until his assailant drove one of those valyrian steel daggers deeper into the boy's body the blade found his throat carving him a bloody red smile from ear to ear as it dragged across his Jugular a single twist of the wrist was all it took to cut off his gurgles entirely Oi say what you would about Sandor Clegane he was quick on the draw a furious storm of sword and fists descended upon the king's killer out of the whirlwind he thought he heard laughter the killer weaved away from his wild swings backing away towards the parapet hooking a blade against the hound's massive sword he dragged the larger man away with him parrying furiously as he went one of Joffrey's king's guard cried out to the king Tyrion knew it was already too late to save him Joffrey was already dead or dying a grunt told him the hound had fallen literally he turned just in time to see the wraith kick the man off the parapet forcing him the short drop to the ground below not enough to kill a man like Sandor Clegane but enough to stun him in a blur of black it spun on him dagger drawn back ready for the killing blow then incredibly the wraith paused well fancy meeting you hear the words were a 
his Tyrion couldn't find his voice he knew that draw you don't move the assassin grinned and raised his arms high hands clenched into fists for a moment Tyrion thought that he might surrender then he cast both hands down and hurled the contents of his palms to the ground for a fleeting moment the imp thought he saw a flash of glass in the firelight they danced in the air for a long moment spinning wildly end over end as they raced to the ground then the flasks exploded thick noxious smoke poured forth from the depth strangling his sight and taking his senses with it for a moment a terrible awful moment there was silence then the shouting began screaming all around and men were screaming dying knives flashed like silver in the smoke dealing death to any who stumbled near blood soaked the stones with screams and something else because over the sounds of blood and battle he heard something new smelled it felt it a roaring explosion the flash of green told him precisely where some of the wildfire had gone, someone had just hurled a massive jar of it at the mud gate even as he looked on a flaming torch was flung against the wood time seemed to force itself into not slowing into a single eternity of a second he watched the orange fire climb across the accelerant creeping up towards the stone thom Tyrion was lucky. He was just far enough that the blast that ripped open the gate merely hurled him to the ground rather than into the flame splinters of wood and stone swept passed and he shielded his face wincing a bit as the aftermath of the explosion swept over him and then as quickly as it had come it was gone dazzed he stumbled away scrubbing at his eyes what he saw there nearly broke his spirits entirely the mud gate lay open before him and all of Stannis's army and his allies poured through it like a raging fire so many too many for every man a Lannister killed five more fell to Baratheon blades and were those Tyrell banners there amongst them seven hells they where he turned to his men and found them fighting for their lives the hound was gone having either fled as the defenders were overwhelmed or perished somewhere in the fray the tide was turning and it was turning against them with his fleet wholly intact the usurper Stannis continued to land his countless ships and disgorge more and more of his soldiers shoring up his vanguard Tyrion had no such reinforcements to speak of the men knew this and disheartened and bereft of their king they began to Falter thousands of men crashed against the rock that was King's Landing and slowly that rock began to crumble piece by piece pebble by pebble it came apart chipped away at its very foundations where was the wildfire brawn where was brawn as Tyrion was processing this an arm wrapped around his throat and slammed him against the parapet he struggled fiercely but his attacker was too strong, his grip too sure desperate the Lannister reared back and smashed his head against his attacker's stomach. An annoyed grunt snaked through his ear and then he heard the voice someone once asked me if given the opportunity I'd choose peace or violence I think I finally have an answer for you the vice on his windpipe tightened I choose violence you that was Tyrion's last thought before something hard and blunt struck his head and the sweet slumber of sleep took him.